let's talk a little bit about planning with flexibility. So how do you plan with flexibility in Anaplan? So what we're going to do now is we're just going to do a little bit of sensitivity analysis on the uh, on the PL. In this example here, and again, let me pick, uh, I'm going to pick the Northeast region here. In this example, what we've got are some key drivers. We've got our number of units that we're selling. We've got our current year pricing book. We've also got the ability to institute a hiring freeze. And we also have our, our, um, our workforce planning assumptions around like, you know, healthcare premiums, FICA, food, et cetera. We also have a high level P&L. We've got our earnings per share, which right now from a what if perspective we're missing. Uh, and we've also got some balance sheet drivers for like DSO, DPO, inventory turns, et cetera. So let's start off by, you know, looking at potentially a huge spike in healthcare premiums. I mean, COVID obviously, you know, you're probably going to be impacted by that. And you could see that, you know, we're looking at sort of a negative, negative performance. So that's one headwind. What if, you know, what if on another headwind, because of mar competitive marketing pressures, we actually have to take, you know, a 10% cut in our price on a, on a particular product. And you can see that kind of think things continue to kind of deteriorate. And we're even, you know, we're missing our EPS even more. If we take a look at our targets, you know, we've got a target of we've got a target of 420, and we're currently at 417. So if we go to the street with these numbers, we're gonna obviously we're gonna get, you know, it's gonna it's not gonna be good. So what are some of the things that we can do to kind of improve this situation? Some of the decisions we can make. Well, first of all, what if we try to introduce? You know, we've got some new products here. We think maybe we can we can institute a price increase. So maybe we can increase prices a little bit and you can see that things start to start to improve a little bit better. We've got we're still missing our numbers, but we're getting closer. And you know, what if we institute like let's say a 6 month a 6 month hiring freeze. So by doing that, Anna plans automatically recalculating, you know, our P&L and we're still missing our numbers. But what if we think that we can actually increase our units, you know, maybe by potentially, you know, by cutting this price, we're going to sell more and potentially you know, uh, you know, potentially, you know, improve uh, some of our, you know, some of our other product. We're going to sell more of our other products as well that potentially have a more favorable margin. But what if we put in like twenty five thousand units? So if we if we if we sell our units, you know, potentially we'll, you know, we'll, you know, we'll get closer to that. And what if we have to potentially, you know, we're looking at maybe a, even a higher growth rate for another product? And you can see by doing that, we actually beat our numbers in the what if scenario. But in order to do that, we had to counter that headwind of health insurance by instituting a six month hiring freeze by um, and, and, and also a, uh, you know, a, a deterioration in the price of one product because of competitive pressures, we had to actually outperform in two other products by a substantial margin. We also had to sell more. And we also potentially might have some other levers to pull, like from a cash flow perspective, maybe we want to try to pull in our DSO and maybe push out you know, our DPO to try to improve cash flow. So you can have alerts around free cash flow as well. But in order to do that, these are the decisions that we had to make. Is that logical? Does it make sense? But the key is that you're now able to have kind of these conversations within Anaplan instead of struggling with the numbers. Let Anaplan do that work for you.